I modified the Michael Bay machine to go even farther. I joined two 20 foot sections of speed rail with some cabling to create the biggest, biggest orbit, orbit yet. Yeah. The 40 foot Orbitron. Orbitron. I bet we can spin at least 800 millimeters. Is that 1200 millimeters? We don't even have enough room for a face. Yeah. Do you have a small product? Do you have any merch? Introducing somebody's merch. A little higher. Yeah, a little lower. And a little towards you. The first prototype was a tennis ball. Right. And I was like, missed opportunity. Yeah. Needs to be a moon. So after my last video, I set up the Orbit, AKA Michael Bay machine in my backyard, attached to a slack line between two trees. And as I was getting some out of control Michael Bay hem parallax, problems arose. What the hell? Bar is bending. So we've completely maxed out my backyard at 33 feet. There's, there's just no more room back there. So we have to take the orbit somewhere else. We have to see if the slack line can work in a more professional set somewhere. Who do I know that has a warehouse? Now that video got me quite a bit of attention. It also got me the attention of a fellow YouTuber pal who needs an orbit shot to finish a video. May I introduce Operation Driftwood Storm or Driftwood Rescue. Storm or Rescue, I, I can't decide. This is Jesse. He built his warehouse studio with shipping containers. He enjoys daytime naps, insanely technical unboxing intros, and yes, his one wheel. This is Josh. Yo, yo, Josh, yo. Josh did a Kickstarter for this affordable wannabe robot arm, and now he spends all his time trying to brake test it. Which means we're gonna need some triangles. Josh and Jesse live five hours apart. So I guess we're making some boy band shit, huh? So this is a perfect opportunity to bust out the cinema kit. See this? This is called the block bearing. And we modified one of these to fit on the orbit. Look at that, see? Perfect. So now we have something to anchor the triangles to. From a practical standpoint, this is a perfect opportunity to help out Jesse, but also test out the orbit to see if we can get it even wider and longer using a cable system and also set it up in more of a professional setting, not just somebody's backyard between two trees. Now the problem here is the warehouse is very big, very tall ceilings, and I'm not sure how we're gonna anchor into the walls, but this is part of the process. We're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure this out. I just bought this sweet 2009 minivan. Guess what DVD was left in the entertainment center? Yeah, dude. Yeah, time for a road trip. Hey, can I borrow the minivan? He says Senzo Tanaka is his Shidoshi. Bloodsport is not just a movie. It is a part of my soul because I was born in the 80s. Very good. good. But break, break, break. Not to hit, hit back, back. What's the whole world? Fingerprinted, you like that? Not in about 15 years. You're gonna go out of here to the right under that green flashing light. Okay, All right. thank you. What up? These are our offices. <laughs> You're gonna wanna watch your head in this one. These are the tunnels. Uh, we do have a resident bat. Bro, what's that squirrel doing up there? What's the shot that you want to do? Okay, so I'm imagining unboxing this one wheel GT in the center of the courtyard. And I would love for the camera to be able to orbit the entire uh, perimeter of this courtyard and have some foreground elements that the camera's gonna pass behind so that we can kind of like use that to mask out and jump through time as- This is the first video we did. It kind of like come out from behind a box. And then for the Pint X, we're like, oh, you know, it's the improved Pint. We gotta make the intro improved. So this is like the V2, it's upgraded. You're trying to- We're trying up, to up it. Up We're trying it. to up All the right. Andes, but we want it to be bigger. Now after a quick tour of Evil Empire, Jesse's communal Lost Boy studio, I noticed two things. This was an occupational health nightmare, and it was absolutely perfect test grounds to build the biggest orbit yet. We're gonna need some aluminum speed rail. Let's go get some metal. Let's go get some metal. In Hollywood, the standard material used is aluminum pipe called speed rail. Luckily for us, there's an industrial metal supply down the street from Jesse's warehouse. So the cool thing about uh, speed rail is you can pretty much get it anywhere in the US and Canada, it's all the same size. We're getting 
one and a quarter inch speed rail to outside diameter 1.66. 200 Canadian dollars later, and we have two 20 foot uncut pieces of aluminum speed rail. A 20 foot section of speed rail can easily be transported in a car or van. You just need to tape a red flag to the end of it. Back at the warehouse, we quickly get to work. Sorry. Light is fading fast and I wanna get this test done today. Now first we need to rig up the scaffold. Normally we use speed rails to make the scaffold, but today we're testing out how steady it can be with a slack line. I'm thinking the block bearing is the way to go, but it means we may have to move this up a little higher. So we slide the outdoor rail through the slack line first, then toss it on up. What the hell? I need to go on the other side of that pipe. Yeah! Oh, you're halfway there. Yeah! So we're going to leave it loose at first so we can assemble it on the ground, and then we're going to tighten the slack line and bring the whole assembly up. Down on the floor, we assemble the speed rails to make our cinema arms. This coupler I'm using will fit between the two 20-length rails. A hex key expands the center of its components to keep the poles together. It's definitely not strong enough to support the poles on its own, so we're going to use the power of triangles to support the weight. These guys go on the end. Okay. And then we have cable, we'll use that to tighten. This okay. thing comes off. Yeah. You can screw the motor directly. Oh, right into this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're basically gonna tether each end of the of the bars yeah. with cable here. So that's why you look at all the tr trusses and stuff. It's all triangles and that's what we're gonna make. And then what we can do is just loosen this so that as this drops lower, you know, A square, B square, C square, that kind of stuff. Oh, look at this. Look, see, look at, look at the sides. It's working. We tighten the cables and up it goes. It looks like a lot of work, but all of that took us 45 minutes. Not bad. Introducing Marble's first 40 foot orbit. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. There's so much exciting things happening right now with AI and ChatGPT, and it can get overwhelming. And lately, I've been doing a deep dive on Skillshare. I'm slowly trying to rebrand my channel, do more like hands-on things. Like I just bought my own CNC machine. I know nothing about CNC or Fusion or I don't even know what it's called until now. In this lesson, we are going to look at the interface of Fusion 360. Currently, I'm interested in SEO for my business, creative writing, specifically creating characters, and electronics. What I like about Skillshare, there's no super fast edits, there's no audience retention gimmicks, there's no commercials, there's no hidden agenda. It's just information to learn as quickly and as clearly as possible. Here's one that teaches ChatGPT to code your website for you. So I thought I knew everything about ChatGPT. She teaches on prompts and how to not confuse the AI and to word your questions properly so you get the most out of this powerful language model. Oh, this is interesting. So they also have this new learning path, which is basically curated classes for multiple teachers lumped together in sequence. So you can take one curriculum on the same subject. I'm gonna take that one on the app and I'm gonna listen to it on the go. Anyway, I left a link down below. One month free trial for the first thousand people that sign up. Join Skillshare, get on my level, let's go. Jesse, what do we shoot first? Minivan. So one thing I learned on this setup is longer is normally better, there's more compression, it's more interesting of a shot, but all of this is meaningless if it's inside and there's no background lights to create bokeh. Take this shot for example, 1200 millimeters of this deck of cards. It's cool, but the background is very plain, uninteresting, and at some points it doesn't even look like it's moving. Now compare that shot to my backyard. We're at 200 millimeters and the bokeh created by the light leaks through the leaves is out of this world. It's really hard to compare these two, hands down, outside winds. I think the sweet spot might be 200 millimeters. But there's one advantage shooting inside does have, and it's a big one. There's no wind. So repeat shots are possible. So check this out. So every time the orbit goes around, it makes a little tiny blip sound. And what that's doing is it's notating the exact spot so that you can do a VFX play. And we're gonna do one long orbit about 10 or 15 minutes and change a bunch of things and then stack it in post. 
So after showing Jesse some repeat VFX shots, I could see the wheels um, turning. We have a built-in speaker here, but it interacts with the Bluetooth chip. So essentially, the speaker makes a little blip sound, but in order for it to work, we have to update the firmware and move it onto the VFX beep version. I plugged in the Orbit with a USB-C at the top, and I just plugged it in my computer. Go onto the Orbit website to go to the firmware updater. So in order to do the VFX shots correctly, we need to get the motor going and the camera rolling and we never cut and we never stop the motor. Every time it hits the same exact spot in the circle, it'll blip. And then we can import that into our editor, slice on the little audio blip, and we can then stack those clips. It makes this so fast and so easy. The app version also makes a little bit of noise too. It's because the Bluetooth chip is next to the speaker and it gives a little bit of feedback. But we found a very clever way to defeat that noise. Can we do the same exact precise repeatability with a slack line? Whoa, dude, look how fast this thing took off. We're going five RPM. Nice. So let's take it up. <laughs> oh no. How did we not see that coming? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm the founder. <laughs> <laughs> let's try that again. We'll be laughing. We'll be laughing all the way to the bank. the one wheel GT. <sighs> so mission accomplished, we got the shots, but in the end, this is a huge learning lesson for me. Longer, it seems, is not always better. If there's any takeaway from this is that you can use a slack line, you have to have it tight. If it's like this, it's not gonna work because as soon as the pole lines up with the slack line, it wobbles. Oh, yeah. So even though this feels like a partial failure, I have to remind myself how far I've come. And something my Shidoshi once said about keeping an open mind. I came here to start on for 2,000 years. Knowledge passed from father to son, father to son. Teach me. I can do it. You are not Japanese. You are not an Alpha. You taught me using any technique that works. Never to limit myself to one style. Keep an open mind. Or to honor you. Shidoshi.